present the roadmap for how Alec Baldwin can become our next president. And we debate what kind of food we'll turn Keith into when we compost him. We also discover that we should really be taking some extra care to watch out for goblins. For everyone who thought that our election was a joke, check out the Ukraine. The robot lady, sound the alarm! Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! The world has gone to just another level now. I don't know if you heard about this, Adam, but apparently the president of Ukraine is now a comedian who used to play the president of Ukraine on TV. See, I think you're lying because I don't see a single world where a TV personality could become president. It's almost like if you, yeah, it's, who would believe that someone who's running a TV show and pretending to be the boss would then become the boss of a country? I, it's totally unbelievable. I think you're lying to me. Well, that that's never what we do. in a civilized country. On this show, that's what we do is we lie to people because the next hour of your lives, ladies and gentlemen, will be replaced with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons writing about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal here at Another Wasted Hour is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics, scandal, and scandals, or... I don't know, like uh, reality TV shows, hosts, but one <laughs> brimming with art, music, and culture. As impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here in studio, we have a man who is less famous than his brother, Lewison. <laughs> we have Galen Clark. Yeah. Uh, Lewison. It's awesome. Uh, your, Lewis and Clark. Lewison, your brother, you Lewison. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were into puns when you when you got here. So I'm not I, I'm not there yet. <laughs> you do have a brother actually. He's a he's I, a DJ. I do. Uh yeah, he he's uh, an artist in his own. Yeah. Uh, he should go as DJ Lewis and Clark. I know. I, I'm not sure why he he's he's had an, several monikers over the past couple of years, but I'm not sure why, I'm I'm going to demand he changes it. If he comes on the show, we're, we're going to make him change it live on the show. Yes. Or, you know, like we were saying earlier, he could be impersonating uh, an artist. You know, artist. you create that that artist to bring in. For <laughs> exactly. I love it that we're now bringing people into like what happened before we started recording. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should have been here. Yeah. It was so good. Oh, my goodness. The jokes were just flowing. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> Speaking of jokes, did you hear about this, that the Ukrainian president is now a comedian who used to play the Ukrainian president. I just now heard that. And uh, it's almost, it makes you like wonder if it's part of the, something like the Truman show. Like, are we, what are we, what's <laughs> reality? Anymore? Yeah. I, it's, Does it's this mean a, that Alec Baldwin will be number 46? <laughs> right. I think, uh, I think it's amazing. And uh, I'm all for it. You know, I think that there's something of value there, honestly, because if you really think about it in terms, and I'm not saying this uh, like to toot my own horn, because I don't think that I'm a very com very good comedian compared to like professional comedians. But if you speak to professional comedians, their job is to really like uh, dive into very deep into subjects and understand them in a way that they can then pull out the humor, right? Mm -hmm. They They have to be able to see things from different perspectives. They have to be able to kind of, take a step back and look at a bigger picture and then go back down into the minutia to find kind of what's funny and what's the approach mm -hmm. that they can take on something to make it entertaining and not too offensive. You right. Know, or, you know, which is so hard to do and is kind of what you would hope a good leader and a good politician would do. Right. Being able to take a look at a subject and be able to understand it in a deep way and look from different perspectives, mm -hmm. but instead of, finding the comedy in it to find the solution for it. Right. So, um, so maybe there's, maybe they're starting something that we should maybe think about. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get too political here, but I'm sure there's a lot of people in our country that think, you know, our, our leader is part of a joke, but that's a different discussion discussion. I but... mean, it, it definitely wasn't something we expected, <clears throat> right? You would, yeah. if you had said 25 years ago, uh, you, uh, you know, for, uh, what, I don't know. When did uh, Real World come out? Oh, Christ. Probably uh, not 25 years ago, but uh, I'll, I'll 15, find out. Hold on. 10, 12, 20, whatever mm -hmm. it is, like second season of, of uh, Real World comes out and you're like, one day, one of these people, they're going to be president. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, nah, that's not going to happen. 
you know. And it, it's interesting because they may or may like. I mean, presidents of the past became famous after they became president you know and then yeah well and i'm sure some were were famous before as yeah, well yeah, right? absolutely i feel like maybe roosevelt was pretty well known with the rough riders and everything before his sure. presidency yeah. so um so yeah they had 92 keith but 92. maybe maybe not like celebrity status though i guess is what i was yeah saying you know and it's kind of interesting now that it's flipping so i was of. i was shockingly close that's like 25 years ago right um, 27. Yeah. Wow. I, <laughs> I, I pulled that out of the top of my head, but I, uh, am sad how close that was actually to reality. <laughs> I was trying to overshoot it by a bit, but yeah, you wouldn't have thought that, right? You wouldn't, you've thought, well, definitely not right. Like whoever mm-hmm. wins cake boss isn't going to go on to become president. And then, uh, you know, Trump did have a reality TV show and he was a larger than life persona in it and then became president. So it's really it's interesting that that's now a thing that's occurred. And now we see it in the Mm -hmm. Ukraine as well. And it it also brings up the point that, you know, you can always change what you're doing. You know, you don't have to stay, you know, a fireman or like, you know, (laughs) uh, like you don't have to stay in your profession profession yeah the rest of your true. life you know um even if we want you to sometimes <laughs> you don't have to uh we've we've asked adam to continue being our engineer but no he wants to become Cirque du Soleil <laughs> and we can't stop him if he wants to be ultra bendy that's yeah, his yeah. it's his right um uh, you picked a bad example because I have not been able to bend very far for I mean, many years now. <laughs> you're pretty flexible with your schedule, though. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. So it, so it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> He's very trained. So, uh, so uh, Galen Clark, you are doing a show coming up on May 9th. It's Thursday, May 9th. And my understanding, there's wine. Uh, yes, there which, is. Which is great for any show, mm-hmm. right? Uh, alcohol in any way, but then wine and some, you do kind of acoustic music, would you say? Is it? Yeah, currently my, my record, you know, was full band format, but I played a lot of the instruments and had, you know, featured guest artists, but Mm -hmm. primarily I have been performing as a solo artist. Right. And that'll be happening, uh, Thursday, May 9th at Tin Lizzy Wine Works. Never Mm -hmm. heard of that before, but it's up in Clarksville, Maryland. It is. Have you Um, played there before? I have a couple of times. So, uh, when I'll try and make this story short, but when uh, my dad retired <laughs> we have an hour. from the Air Force <laughs> and uh, we moved back to the States, um, I we both him and my mom were like, you know, where are we going to go move to essentially um, when he retired active duty? Uh-huh. And my mom landed work first in Maryland. So that's kind of where the family moved to. And um, our first family friends that we kind of made were on our block, you know, mm-hmm. and um the Zucro family and they're amazing people. And, um, Dave Zucro has been a winemaker for, you know, uh, several decades now. And, um, he owns like, you know, a a winery and, um, Oh, so you actually, you knew them before you started playing there. Yeah. That's um, pretty cool. Because actually, um, Dave's oldest son, Matt, um, he and I like were, he was one of the first friends I made moving back to the States, um, from Germany and um like we hit it off he's a really good drummer and we just started jamming and does he want to be president because i think we can he probably honestly that would be great and he went to the same school uh obama went to Ox- occidental look at that so yeah you know th- it could happen it's destiny anything you want <laughs> are you a plumber president Any <laughs> anyone can be president now we were grow when we grew up that's what our parents said Anyone can become president, and we didn't believe them, and it's been proven now. That's true. <laughs> Anyone can do it. Yeah, this is good. This is this is the golden era. Any literally, you could just point at someone on the street, and you'd be like, "How do you feel about being president?" And they'd be like, "Yeah, I guess." I, and boom, president. <laughs> are you a comedian? Are you a reality TV star? <laughs> are you somebody who happens to be able to speak English? No, still president. Shit. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> eventually that won't be a requirement either that last one yeah no i i think they'll i think they will just eventually it'll just be like can uh can you shoot straight and that'll be <laughs> good good enough that's look look at the grouping can on you that. take off your enemy's head with a single swing of your axe <laughs> okay you can be war chief i mean president <laughs> <laughs> uh so so that'll be fun so you go uh get wine 
uh, listen to some acoustic music. Absolutely. Uh, we have a track from you today called uh, Giant's Causeway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to play a little of that later on the show. If you're impatient and want to hear the whole thing, go to the one hour mark of the show and you can go listen. You can come back and join us uh, for all the levity that comes up uh, between that and this. Right. So uh, you're going to miss out on a lot of show if you just fast forward and then stop. Uh, and that's from a new album you have called Providence. Mm-hmm. When did Providence come out? That came out um, almost a year ago. Almost a year, okay. Yeah, about a, about a year ago. And it's a full album, right? Mm-hmm. I believe it's a 13-song album. That's great. Yeah. Lots of music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about uh, Giant's Causeway a little later in the show. Um, but I assume you're going to be playing that at Tin Lizzy Wineworks. Yeah, and uh, a bit of some new stuff. I mean, oh, okay. I, uh, I've been writing since that because yep. it was like a year ago and some of the songs are... I, you know, from four years older, older. So a lot of new stuff and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, some classic stuff thrown in there as well. Do you have like a new album in the works? Are you going to be dropping something? Yes. Um, actually, um, I thought about, you know, sending you guys some new stuff and I probably will anyway, but (laughs) well, thank you. (laughs) I was like, like, no, make them suffer with the old stuff. (laughs) What do they be the first time? What do you th- what do they think they are? President? <laughs> uh, um, uh well cool. Well hopefully uh we'll get to hear some of that when you have it ready for public consumption. Though. Yeah. That'll be great. Um so uh once again, uh Thursday, May 9th at Tin Lizzie Wineworks in Clarksville, Maryland. Go check that out. I assume Providence and Giants Causeway just on all streaming medias and everywhere. Mm-hmm. Just go to anywhere that other music is playing and then type that in and then you'll get to listen to it. Yeah. Or buy it. Even better, buy it. That would that would be awesome. <laughs> All right. So uh let's see. Let's uh yeah, it's time we can move on here. Let's move on to um uh, doing the weather report. Uh, have you heard about this? It's it's pretty big deal. We are taking people who are um are usually just musicians and then casting them in a a real world scenario. A uh a uh, reality television show where we make you the editor in chief of your own brand new publication. Uh oh, yes. I'm not. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're hoping. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we're gonna pitch you some stories for your publication. You let us know as the boss mm-hmm. um, if they uh, whether or not they make it into your publication. Um, so we'll start off with Adam. All right. Uh, new whistleblower protection office is under investigation for retaliating against whistleblowers. <laughs> Damn it. You had one job to do. <laughs> so it's pretty much, it, sorry, go ahead. I wonder how they're retaliating. Do they have a horn? Like what? Uh, it's a louder whistle. A louder whistle. <laughs> 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 so this was actually born out of, um, if you remember from a couple years ago, a lot of shit going on with the VA. Yeah. The Virginia. And and there's a lot, and not not just there, but there's a lot of cases of you know people wh- trying to whistleblow, saying, "Hey, shit's fucked up," and mm-hmm. them getting intimidated out of their job or prosecuted or something like that. Right. So one of the um, earliest things that Trump did was create. I can't find the name of the office now, but it was basically a government agency designed to protect whistleblowers. Yes. Mm-hmm. And instead, what they have done is intimidate whistleblowers, <laughs> prosecute them, and try to get them fired. <laughs> So what what it's done is the opposite. But I wonder if there was some kind of, you know, (sighs) retention program with bringing them into the Space Force. You know, you got to (laughs) wonder. This reminds me. So this is perfect because what they did is what I've always thought they should have done with music. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, what they did is they they said, hey, if you're a whistleblower, it's great. It's no problem. Come right over here to the whistleblower place and then you'll be safe. And then they destroyed them. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I always thought with music, this is the thing that they should have done. It was super super dumb they had napster and everybody was stealing music using napster and what they did is they shut down napster Mm -hmm. and what they what they should have done has been like oh no no everybody come you're a napster that's great come on by no problem and then then pick them off from there you would have you would have had them in one place you would have been fine for piracy yeah i think that would have been a a good solution Yeah. yeah or or at least be like hey we noticed that you're pirating music um, we just need you to pen, like pay 10 bucks a month, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a new service. It, we're leaving it up. You can still use it. It just costs a little bit. And then they wouldn't have had to like have everybody go out and figure out how to like torrent on their own 
and then be like, no, 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 come back. Now we have services. We have services that you can buy. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Okay. But without them shutting down Napster, we never would have gotten LimeWire. And without LimeWire, right. we wouldn't have ruined all of our parents' computers back in like the <laughs> early 2000s. <laughs> Yes, the the great wave of porn and viruses that hit parents' computers. <laughs> and you just look at your mom like, what have you been doing? My, My favorite God. is um, Victor tells a story about he was trying to download the movie Triple X. Uh-huh. Um, and as he and as he hit XXX enter is when he realized, wait a minute, what have I done? Oh, no. <laughs> is this saved? Was this saved in a cache somewhere? Delete the computer. <laughs> Delete everything on the computer. <laughs> it's the only way to solve it. So whistleblowers being intimidated by the whistleblower protection agency. Is um, it news? I, I think, especially when it's prefaced by the Ukrainian <gasps> president story, there's some <laughs> irony. There's some great irony here. There and is. I, I'm going to say yes. That's what we're Ooh. going for. It's a world of irony now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the UN, it stands for United Irony. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know how you know how to spell, but okay. I feel like you don't know what ironic means. Um, so <laughs> Nobody does. There's an entire song about it, and it wasn't even correct. <laughs> it was ironic that there was no irony in it. <laughs> uh, That's like meta irony. Right. For getting I, there. I like to think that, that she was that smart, that she was like, this is going to be awesome. Watch this. It's like The Room. Have you guys heard of this film? <laughs> yeah. It, yes. It's a wonderful film. Yeah, I have no idea if that's a joke or not, but you you have to be like... <laughs> Ah, he did this on purpose, right? This is, I don't, I can't imagine <laughs> that he doesn't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, death of a funeral. Uh, the state of Washington is poised to legalize human composting. Of course it's Washington. Yes. The most ironic item in the list of industries that the millennials are blamed for killing, the funeral industry. Imagine as the uh, family uh, cries as the grandpa is lowered to his final resting place next to some old squash and newspapers and covered with sawdust and long clippings to keep the smell down. Seriously, how guilty are you going to feel when you don't recycle your beer can at the memorial service? Huh? <laughs> Just saying, this is how we get people serious about recycling. Use wow. them to grow peppers? Huh? Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Woo, grandma, that, spicy. Th this is reminding me of... Um... There's a Johnny Depp film. I think it's called The Secret Window. The guard. It's oh, I can't give away the ending though. <laughs> but I will just say that um, you know, he's been eating something that has been grown out of a garden uh, that may or may not have had people in. in I think in the you've garden. given it away at this point. <laughs> Everyone's gonna forget. I probably didn't even say the right film. But uh, I think that film came out when I was in like freshman year of high school. So by now, I think it's safe. Okay. Right. It's not a recent film. But yeah. uh, there's yeah. no spoilers. I mean, the bodies, they're probably spoiled, but everything else is not a spoiler. I feel like there's some there's some ethics in there. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't eat anything from that compost. You don't think so? I, I mean, if it was my my someone I knew. But how how else do you expect to get their power? Someone I didn't know. Um, <laughs> what if you find out that Gam Gam made some great yams? Yeah, Gam Gam yams. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I. I just, I don't think... What if you could eat Marion Berry Berries? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Marion Berry. He was he was the uh, governor, I think, uh, or not governor, uh, mayor, mayor of, of DC. DC. Oh, okay. Marion Berry. And then what you do is compost him, and you put a berry br a bush on top of it, and then it would be Marion Berry Berries. What other good ones can we do from this? <laughs> I feel like this is really good. I'm mm. I'm really disappointed that we can't do anything with uh, Kevin Bacon because oh yeah I don't think we can I, compost him to make anything that'll make bacon. Although I feel like the, they've gotten so far with synthesizing like soy proteins, they could probably make some artificial bacon out of oh, Kevin Bacon. You think maybe oh. we do soybeans <laughs> out of Kevin Bacon and we make we make uh like uh, artificial Kevin Bacon bacon? For I'm sure. in vegan sure. bacon vegan bacon bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so this uh, is how this is how the movie Soylent Green really comes to pass. Right. <laughs> We're eating people, but just, you know, through some things. Um, so is it news? I'm going to say no. 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 Not news. No. Oh, all right. You're playing hard to get. I like it. <laughs> Capricorns need not apply. Is it legal to pick a roommate by astrological sign? 
I mean, it's better than race, right? I feel like <laughs> we've gotten past that phase, I hope. This, I'm well, important I, to some people. Keith, you're wrong. That's true. Those are horrible people, though. I, I've been told, I guess it is because I'm a Capricorn, but I think astrology is total bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a Capricorn would say. Yeah. I mean, it, but it is, I understand that it's just another way of people to make sense of the world. So right. That's I, true. And you can't discredit that. It's like, you know, just as valid as some other theories. It or... does seem suspicious that everyone born in February is similar. Like that, right? Like with their disdain for astrology? No, or... just like like if you're all Aquarius throughout the years, no matter like what year you were born, astrology would say, like, well, you're an Aquarius, so these are the traits you have because the sun happened to be in this spot and the moon was there, and so you know, you you're very it's diplomatic and you're see, like, oh. everyone knows that astrology is bullshit compared to those Chinese menus that tell you what animal you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I was really disappointed by those ones because I started to realize. So at first I thought I was a snake. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I was uh, I was born in February and that sometimes the Chinese New Year is after my birthday. So I had to figure out which year I actually was in. And it was mm -hmm. in the previous year, so I'm a dragon. But it's better. because you probably like thought prior that you were something else, the snake, yeah. right? And then you started talking to people about it, like, mm -hmm. wow, this is really relevant via their confirmation bias. Then you were sold. You're like, wow, this is like really telling my life story. But the moment I found out, I was like, you know what? Snake doesn't apply at all, really, when I look okay. at it. Okay, fair enough. I was really a dragon <laughs> all this time. If you... We really like split hairs. I I just would be curious to run a test and um, you know, maybe change someone's birth date. You know, like we raise them in this Truman Show type of world. Yeah, no, and, and where there's no ethics. Yeah, yeah. I, I like and then we just change them to think they're a different sign, and then we scientifically disprove uh, astrology. Right. <laughs> yeah no that's not weird no <laughs> that's not worse than astrology i'm gonna just stick with astrology i think it's way less harmful than True. putting people it's in playful. Truth. it is playful <laughs> um all right so is do we is it news i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say no no, no. Uh, oh my goodness he's he's I, tough i guess it's i'm a capricorn maybe, maybe that's <laughs> yeah you were like i don't want anything in my paper the, the, only, the only thing i was going to say about is you know parents are becoming a more and more loaded issue but my take is if really someone's going to turn you down as a roommate because of your astrological sign did you really want them as a roommate in the first place right can you turn down roommates who turn you <laughs> who, uh, who select you due to the sign that you are that would be the the important question because someone's yes. like i selected you because you're aquarius i'd be like I'm not moving in with you. <laughs> you are a yeah, forget if I pay rent on time. Like if I'm an Aquarius, then we're good to go. I remember when I moved into the dorms, I think it was like my junior year. I literally like brought my stuff into the room and there was like a, a joint and an ashtray and it just smelled like pot. And like my mom like was bringing stuff in with me and she was like, what's going on here? And I was like, nothing. We're leaving. Like, I was like, and it wasn't because I had a problem with the guy doing drugs. It was because the guy wasn't there and had no common sense to him. Right. Like, yeah. What do you, <laughs> you're just going to leave it out. And you know that somebody else is coming into the, have a conversation. Just, you need to have that conversation. <laughs> you're an idiot. I don't want anything to do with you. That's yeah. It was not the consumption that bothered me. It was the decision making. I was like, mm, I don't, no, nope, I don't want to be in this room when that goes down. And that's the right sign you should follow. Right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> like I go, nah, hide it a little bit. Like, put a coffee can over it or something. I don't know. Spray spray just a little Febreze or something. Just make an effort so that we all go, oh, yeah, yeah, no. We understand. It's it's illegal. We should probably not do this. We're not doing this? Right. We're not doing it. Okay, cool. On move-in day. Right. <laughs> or whenever. And then, then he can come to me and be like, is, is it right if I do it? I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no. But when my mom's here, you're going to be like, yeah, no, bot's bad. And then <laughs> and then when she leaves, what, whatever. Um, I think we also, like that year, I moved in with another friend and we had at one point a pony keg in our shower. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good in. spot. It was great. Ice packed around it. I didn't even drink. I don't drink. And so it was just funny to me. Right? Everyone was like, hey, man, can I get some of the beer from your shower? And I was like, that's the greatest sentence I've ever heard. That like redefines the the 
shower beer. The you know, like, <laughs> right. yeah. and I'm sure it gave you a nice seat while you're in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. We invented shower beer before shower beer was even like a thing, and we did it better. <laughs> we had the whole keg on tap. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, let's see. What do I have? I think I already hit that, but I'm going to do it again. Austrian prison escapee returns because he was fed up with life in the sun. A 64-year-old man who fled Austrian prison turned himself in after living 10 and a half years in the Canary Islands. He was quoted as saying the island, quote, is not as nice as it used to be, and he had lived there long enough. Wow. This sounds like <laughs> like a Bond villain or something. Right. <laughs> it sounds like a great like movie plot. Right. Maybe. I assume the only reason he went in is so that he could then take over the prison and break somebody bigger out for a lot of money so he could go back to the Canary Islands. There's some there's actually some action film happening that we're not aware of. <laughs> yes. I imagine. Well, because he dug the tunnel from the islands it underground oh Under, underwater under the ocean yeah. way below the crust of the earth no that's good <laughs> from from the from the canary islands owned by spain yeah all the way to austria could it could have done it he's had 10 and a half years so uh, i i like your stay i like it i it's think it's plausible it's plausible i think we might need to get as Mythbusters. plausible as astrology i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know what this guy should be president that's oh, the yeah. guy who broke out of the, the uh-huh prison? yeah look at that what, anybody but would it be his country or you know like any country he wants he just, okay he just throws a dart <laughs> he's now president of that country that's are we good with this? I mean, he's I'm, impressive. He's dug this tunnel under the crust of the earth. Right under the ocean. With a spoon, a shank? What are we? <laughs> I mean, he couldn't get a regular shovel. He was in prison <laughs> and then the Canary Islands. We'll skip the Canary Islands part, yeah. but he probably didn't have money for a shovel. So he probably had to do it with his bare hands. I was going to go with soup spoon. Bigger than a spoon, but not as big as a shovel. Ah, no. Yeah, that's still tough. So is it news? I want to say yes. Yes. All yeah. right. Yeah. Excellent. We're on a roll now. We're starting a streak. <laughs> we're streaking. So we're, we're running a little short on time, so we're going to go into the lightning round. Sure. So we're, we're just going to throw some headlines at you. If you have questions, we'll try to answer, but we didn't read these articles nearly as much as we did the other ones. <laughs> Which we didn't read very well either. <laughs> <laughs> Goblins terrorize villagers, kill livestock and crops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to question it. <laughs> it's obviously true. And it's probably Washington State, you know. I where... mean, it's no, it's being reported by, by the Zimbabwe Mail, so it's okay. got to be true. What? Yeah, absolutely. It was probably reported by a prince there who has access to a lot of money if you just send him a check. That's Nigeria. It's anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Say the, Look, Niger- the, prince, the Nigerian prince became president of Zimbabwe. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're not good with African ge- uh, geography. We already set that up uh, before the show. We know that that's yeah. a thing that we're not good at. Uh, There's a lot of things we're not good at. All right. So uh, so you're saying that's, that's in? Absolutely. Goblins. In. All right. Uh, Amazon is making its delivery drivers take selfies to prove who they are and reduce fraud. This was really interesting, and I would expect that you want more details. I do. Um, yeah. I think that is really cool. And just side tangent, I, I met recently a UPS delivery guy who right. he started this really cool thing called, um, it, it was like UPS dogs or something. Okay. Everywhere he goes to deliver these packages, he's taking- He leaves a dog. Well, no. He, <laughs> <laughs> he's been- uh, Plot twist. He's been shipping dogs in the boxes. No, he takes a picture of um, the dog that's at the door or right. whatever, and he put it on an Instagram, and it went viral. Oh, kind of cool, but different than this. Is it just obviously, pictures of dogs attacking him. <laughs> and mailman, oh, like, oh God, no! He's trying to dismantle that preconceived notion <laughs> or get evidence for cases. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's almost like hitchhikers sending a picture of the guy who picks them up to their friend. So if you know the text stop coming, they know which one got her. True. You yeah. know, it's like okay, the last the last dog on my Instagram is the one that killed me. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing that I found out while looking through this story, which mm-hmm. I thought was kind of an interesting story. So at first, I thought 
maybe they were taking pictures of the people they're delivering to to be like, hey, is this the person that's supposed to go to? Mm -hmm. Then that said, no, it's taking pictures of the driver. I'm like, you gave that guy like a truck, right? So like, you probably know who he was, right? Like you work with him. Did you know that you can essentially sign up to be like an Uber delivery driver for Amazon? Yeah. I, did you know that? I did know that, but I did I didn't know how lenient it was, apparently. Yeah. So you it's called Amazon Flex and you can just go be like an Uber driver, but for packages, and you go pick up packages That's and then cool. you deliver them. Mm -hmm. And apparently they were having problems where essentially like a guy would sign up and then he would just get his friends to deliver a bunch of things all over the place to make money. I guess that's creating a, his own pyramid scheme, I guess. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure exactly if that made him more money, if it was like more profitable that way or whatever. But essentially it was supposed to be like you're supposed to be the person doing the deliveries. So now when you do a delivery, you have to basically like take a picture of yourself giving the, confirm the, that yeah, you're confirming that you're delivering. I wonder how that pyramid scheme is working for him. Like, was was he doing things on Prime Pantry and like made his own Amazon or something? <laughs> Amazon. You know, like... <laughs> it's, just, it's just Amazon with the H in the front of it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just a picture of him being like, pick something. <laughs> what do you want? Um, in hopes that he'd be picked up, like Whole Foods was. Right. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, people are doing it on Amazon. I know that for a fact because. I was looking at a uh, windshield wiper fluid on Amazon mm -hmm. and I wanted like the rain X, like all weather, like bug removing, like just great stuff. Right. And I looked at it on Amazon and it was like a bunch of different prices. The best I could find was something like, I want to say it was like $19 for this like gallon. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was like, I know it's good, but it, I feel like that's expensive. And I went to Walmart. It was like five bucks. Yeah. So somebody is selling it on Amazon, right? And that was the Amazon choice one, right? That was the one that they were like, you should probably get mm -hmm. this one. So he's just selling it for 20 bucks on Amazon and probably just going to Walmart and buying it and shipping it to you and True. making profit. I mean, plenty of people do that with becoming a, uh, you know, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A seller that is certified, you know, yeah. a certified seller. That's crazy to me. We're trying to sell music that we made ourselves and nobody will buy it. But somebody is buying windshield wiper fluid from a guy they've never met when they could go to Walmart <laughs> and get it for half the price or a third of the price. It's and true. we're like, just pay a dollar for a song. And they're like, that's way too expensive. It's way too expensive. And you don't have your picture to you know verify that it's your music. That's what we need to do. <laughs> yeah, Selfies maybe. whenever you record. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> so is it news? It is news. All right. Ninja Gorilla slips through electric fence, becomes a legend among apes. Oh, yeah. That's news. You don't even need <laughs> any more. <That's laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, A, it is a lightning round, and I didn't need like a five minute tangent to sell mine. That's true. You're very good. I, <laughs> I haven't told you that recently, but that's because I don't believe it. So <laughs> they're smart. I mean, like, you know, primates, apes. Yeah. You know, they're gorilla, you know. The Amazon primates. Um, yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> he was the one who started <laughs> yeah. Amazon. <laughs> uh. It was, what was the gorilla's name? That's what it was. Oh, I just closed the article. No, uh, no, the, the other gorilla that was... Uh, Harambe? Harambe. Is it too soon? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. too soon. It was, it was like, uh, that's what he is. Uh, Har Haramazon, right? <laughs> Haramazon. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right, court says uh. court says that using chalk on tires for parking enforcement violates the constitution. Did you know that? Hmm? Really? Yeah, you do know about this how this works, right? Like if if the you uh if you park somewhere mm -hmm. and you're supposed to only be there for 2 hours, chalk your tire in the road. Yeah, they they put a they put a little chalk on your tire. If you move the car, the chalk would have moved or at least would have or might have rubbed off. And therefore, they know you weren't standing there. Right. It was that the car moved. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So apparently that's against the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. Really? Yeah. They can't do it, according to the circuit court. Honestly, I haven't Tundra. seen that done in a while. It, You know, when I, I've been in Philly, I've had it done to my car, but not. Not in a while. Yeah, so they can't they can't do it, uh, according to the court case. So if you ever get chalk on your tire, you can just take it to the Supreme Court and be like, constitutional rights, not. Wow. So it's essentially search and seizure because 
the idea is that they're trespassing on your vehicle to be able to gather information about you. So that's surveillance, and they can't do that without ah. a like you know, court, uh, you know, document. What is it? Hmm. subpoena? Or that's whatever. clever. Yeah. So the same way they can't put like a GPS on your car without totally. Yeah, getting a, a warrant. Yeah, getting a warrant. And so um, a court order of some sort. So yeah, this lady got all of her tickets just thrown out because they weren't legally allowed to do it by the constitution. Wow. Isn't that interesting? I think that's news. That's worthy of news. Yeah. Now we can defend that. I I think I might need to go back in time and uh, pull up (laughs) some uh, parking tickets that I've had. Uh, They can get around the law by just taking a picture of your car because. Oh, true. Right. This is where your car was at this time. Timestamp. We didn't touch it, so therefore it's in public, you know, view. So it, and it's in the same spot, right? And so they they'll be able to like get around it pretty quickly. But I thought it was interesting that that is now not going to be admissible. Hmm. All right. Uh, so news, you said it is. Oh yeah, excellent. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of the weather report. I think it went pretty well. Feels mm-hmm. like it was pretty even for the most part. Adam might have won. There might be a chance that he won. Um, but I don't want to let him know about it. So what we do need, though, <laughs> if only I could listen back and post <laughs> using my audio engineer powers, <laughs> being able to turn back time. Uh, <laughs> what is the name of your new publication so people can find it at newsstands? Um, I just know it's going to be a new article with um, Alchemical Records. Oh, OK. Yeah. You're, you're going to publish it through Alchemical Records. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, oh wait, I'm sorry. You you're talking about this this, this publication. Yeah, this publication. You know, we just I, made I one. I should do it. I should do it through through them. We'll They've, talk to Daniel about it. We will. Daniel Warren Hill. He was on the show uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, he's launching a new entertainment uh, a new entertainment website called Alchemical Records. And uh, so that, maybe he'll he'll be interested in this. He would probably want to entertain that, depending on how good. The, the next one goes right we'll, we'll see <laughs> exactly <laughs> um but you were saying that you're actually going to be having uh something published on alchemical records coming up here soon is that right yeah i believe may 3rd um they've got a really cool article coming out with my featuring myself and a number of other great artists in the dmv nice so. okay so you maybe you made some type of list of like like musicians with best hair quite possibly <laughs> or very talented it could also be very talented I, i'm not going to sell you short uh speaking of very both? talented we have a track from you called giants causeway from the album providence um we have a little sample of that we're going to play in a minute you can fast forward to the one hour mark of this show to listen to all of that song um tell us a little bit about this track um so giants causeway was originally an idea um i wrote it before I started writing the guitar part. Um, I'm primarily a guitar player. Okay. And I started writing the guitar part before I went on uh, a trip. And To Ireland by any chance? Yes, to Ireland. For um, those that don't know, there is an actual <clears throat> location called the Giant's Causeway. Mm-hmm. And it's like volcanic rock that's cracked in very geometric ways. Yeah. Looks very unusual, and it's over in Ireland. It is. Yeah. Um, it is... I think it spans from Ballymena um, and then due east. So Ballymena is like one of the the town that I went to, um, and and so that inspired this song. It did, mm-hmm. and the the whole trip itself. I I went on a solo backpacking trip for like two weeks um, oh, wow. in in Europe, mm-hmm. um, and it was uh, really cool. You know, I met yeah. a lot of amazing people, um, had a really great time, and. It was it was just a very coincidental trip, um, just because I met people in various cities, um, and then I've relinked with them later in the trip, all in the span of two weeks. Oh wow, cool! Yeah, you got um, to reminisce. Yeah, I remember two weeks ago when we met? <laughs> oh, exactly. Good times. Um, so yeah, it was uh, a song kind of inspired from that whole trip, but specifically um, about you know flying. I I jumped from Edinburgh over to Dublin. And then I found my way from Dublin up to Ballymena, you know, through a train and a bus. And then um, I woke up. I stayed in this really weird hostel. Uh, most of the time I was staying in hostels. But yeah. in Ballymena, uh, the owner was super nice. Like, I think he spoke like three or four different languages. Oh, really wow. unique guy. Yeah. Um, he spoke like French. And there were these two uh, French girls who were 
going to live on an island just off of the coast. Oh, interesting. To work okay. on a farm for like two months or something. Oh, cool. So they were uh, some people I met there. And then this really odd Canadian couple that like they were traveling the world in a submarine that he built. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and, that sounds dangerous. And he also he is just kind of creepy. I, uh, I built a submarine and now we live in it. That alone is creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Sagittarius. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Any like word we, on what we, color we, that submarine was? What color? Yes. <laughs> uh, the one I, we all live in? I think it yeah. was <laughs> yellow. <laughs> I'm say. Yeah. No, that was probably it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. So you've had a lot of really cool adventures. Yeah. And this is kind of uh, the culmination of that particular adventure is mm-hmm. this song here. Um, so from the album uh, Providence, uh, this is Galen Clark's uh, song uh, Giant's Causeway. On the causeway Billowing clouds rumbled forth Picking pace to embrace the day A path of tramp above the shore Where'd you record this at? Uh, my home studio. That's what I remember you saying. For the most part. Um, yeah. And it, it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank it was a great much. job. Um, uh, so people want to listen to the entire album. Mm-hmm. They can just go up uh, Spotify, Pandora. What, what are the places? That, um, Bandcamp, I, probably. Yeah, I'm on Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, um, pretty much every major you know, distribution platform so search for galen clark that's g-a-l-e-n clark c-l-a-r-k if you don't know that part just give up on life right now well move on i do have a really good friend in in the area quentin clark with an e oh an e at the end ah throwing the old silent e in there be way more interesting if he had thrown it in the middle (laughs) (laughs) Clark. Yeah, Clark. It's with silent E. Oh, like at the end? Now at the beginning. It's e- it's E C. <laughs> it's, it's silent. Yes. It doesn't matter where it is, it's silent. You just put it wherever you want. Uh that's great stuff. Um thank you. You definitely get a sense of the Giants Causeway is kind of like near the ocean, and that has that kind of like sweeping feeling, I think, of the ocean, which is kind of cool. Thanks. Um that's kind of what I was trying to portray a little bit. Nailed so. it. Look at that. I know my guests. <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, so uh all right let's move on and have you uh try your hand at uh the best game show that's ever been invented okay speaking Uh, of great music recorded in a home studio (laughs) (laughs) uh this is uh please god just get one right so our our previous guest i don't know if you listen but kyle ryan Mm -hmm. um he uh is doing a house concert at the commune uh down in washington dc on april 28th um he chose this category for you. So uh, bad news, it's going to be a difficult category. Good news, the 28th hasn't come yet as of right now. Now when the show comes out, it have already passed, but you could still go and beat him up. So, oh, oh I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, you De- could though. I mean, it I feel like you could take him. Is. No, no, you've got a good shot at it. <laughs> nice preemptive denial there. Yeah. <laughs> Can you shoot straight? Yeah. President! <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, are you ready for your category given to you by Kyle Ryan? Sure. It is rare birds in the Canadian Northwest. All right. All right. I'll see you guys later. Just for the record, <laughs> we also hate Kyle Ryan. Oh, okay. <laughs> we might go beat him up ourselves because we had to find these stupid questions. Yeah. So, I, I will admit I cheated. Yeah, we we both may have cheated a little bit. I feel like I stayed like within some reasonable bounds of here but okay uh but and i'll let you know how i cheated uh but so am i just am i seeing which of these birds can carry a three pound coconut like <laughs> right okay the yeah the the average uh the average speed of an unladen <laughs> uh rare bird in this canadian northwest is yeah. that what you're wondering yes uh all right adam start us off so the way I cheated was I just picked endangered birds of the Canadian Northwest because I figured knowing humans, they'll be rare eventually. I mean, I think that means they're rare, <laughs> right? 
Human, humans will be they're, rare they're on their way no to, endangered uh, animals oh, okay. yeah endangered birds will would be inherently rare i think that's perfectly fair yeah yep so getting started the horned lark is a species found all across the northern hemisphere and has many subspecies recently their numbers in north america have been declining as they are among species most likely to be killed by what house cats Composting. Ooh, good cast. <laughs> Composting. Another good guest. Uh, no, compost they are among the species from sorry, other humans. Human so. compost. Human compost. <laughs> no, they are among the species most likely to be killed by wind turbines. Artificial what? bacon, bacon. Wind turbines. Okay. Yes. Apparently, something they just don't see them, or they, or whatever, until it's too late. They think they're mates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's calling to me. <laughs> what you got, Keith? Uh, so I took it one step further than Adam on some of mine. I did do some endangered species. Um, uh, this particular one is an extinct species, which I feel is incredibly rare. <laughs> uh, this uh, bird definitely existed in the Canadian Northwest. What bird was once the most abundant bird in North America, numbering around 3 billion and maybe as much as 5 billion, but is now completely extinct? There were a lot of them, and now they're gone. Hmm. You would think that you'd know this, right? It feels like yeah. the thing you should know. Well, am I am I allowed to to phone a friend, aka you, right next to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guy who wrote the question. Like, I, I I'm trying to think if I would know this bird or if I've seen it in my lifetime. Probably not. Right? Probably not in your lifetime. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. I Definitely say. not pterodactyl, because um, that's, <laughs> not, that's not a bird. I, I'm um, going to give it to him. Pterodactyl. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say some kind of a, a swallow, maybe. That's a good guess. I, I, Adam, do you have a guess? You have the answers in front of you. So. Yeah, I have the answer right in front of me. No, the I'll just say the hint is that you probably didn't see his brother during the government's shutdown. His what? His, his brother? brother during the government yeah. shutdown. You never saw that conspiracy theory? No. All right, I can't really say any more without really giving it away, <laughs> or one... or some other people showing up at his door in a couple. Yeah. Of... Right, right. <laughs> Once it this is, is released, it is the passenger pigeon. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was gonna say pigeon, but it probably wouldn't have counted. <laughs> Just I was like between pigeon. pigeon and swallow. I feel. Like I think those generic. are probably the most abundant things out there right now. That would be passenger my passenger pigeon. Yeah. Hmm. What was what is this conspiracy theory? Just during the last government shutdown, there's like a, one of those stupid joke conspiracies going around that pat pigeons aren't real because when the government was shut down, you never saw any pigeons anywhere. Oh yeah, no, I did hear about pigeons not being real. No, that's great. <laughs> I, they have cameras, you know, they're robots. They make me sure. so happy. All of these like super weird conspiracies, like flat Earth stuff. Oh, they make me so happy. Have you guys? Am I allowed to plug another podcast on here? Sure, go for it. Have Why you guys not? ever heard of um, stuff they don't want you to know? No, it's a great is podcast, it? but okay. it's um a subsidiary of um I guess how stuff is made or whatever. Oh, okay. How yeah, stuff yeah. works. How, how stuff, stuff works. works. Yeah, mm -hmm. really great. Um, well, they play both sides of conspiracies. That's but fun. It's very entertaining, and I've very recently gotten into it. Yeah. Um, no, that it's, it's along with another wasted hour. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, which obviously, is also great. Which is it's really a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy all its own. <laughs> um yeah you can plug as many podcasts as you want because cool. they won't get any listeners from us because we don't have any listeners yet <laughs> <laughs> all right adam these birds are characterized by their mandibles crossing at their tips which gives them the leverage needed to efficiently separate the scales of conifer cones and extract the seeds adult males tend to be red or orange in color and females green or yellow but there is a lot of variation hmm this is hard. This is a very difficult topic. Warbler. Warbler? I like it. I like that you're I mean, shooting. You're I'm, shooting I'm for just it. gonna throw yeah. out like bird names at this point. Yeah. No, that's great. So the, they're known as crossbills. Yeah. You would have had a shot because their their bills. Go yeah. Yeah. Cross maybe. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Because they their mandibles crossing at their tips. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> although rare to find in the Canadian Northwest, it's a pretty prevalent bird that received its name from a resemblance uh, of the male's <gasps> colors to those of a coat of arms of what famous lord who also has a U.S. city named after him? 
lord. Yeah. So he came from England. He was a, a lord in England. He had a coat of arms. This bird uh, happens to, mm-hmm. to it resemble the coat of arms. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he established a city in the United States. Is it a major city? Yeah, I would say it's a pretty major yep. city. It's one that, like, I would say that most people, I would say most people have heard of it. Baltimore? That's it! Really? You got it! Got yeah. it! Really? Nicely done! All okay. right! Woo! Wow. The Baltimore Oriole. Very that cool. That is a bird, and it is named after... Wait, did I have to get the city and the bird? No, I asked city? you which uh, okay. which uh, um, uh, lord it was, and it was Lord Baltimore. So Very nicely cool. done. You got one right! Just one. That's, that's all, all you I, needed. That's all I needed. Yeah, you can quit now. <laughs> I mean, we'll probably keep doing it, but you could it's say... It's fun. Yeah, you could say uncle. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Fin- finish yours off, Adam. Yeah, let's try to fly through these last two because we're running quit low on time. These birds have a round head with ear tufts, yellow eyes, and a yellowish be- be- bill. Their appearance is quite similar to whiskered and eastern screech owls, so it is best to identify them by their calls, which consist of an accelerating series of short whistles or a long trill falling off. Remember, these are rare birds in the Canadian Northwest. And it resembles a screeching owl? It resembles the whiskered and eastern screech owls. And uh, it's it's a bird. It's not an owl. I mean, an owl owls are birds. Bird. Well, I guess specifically. It resembles it's... a whiskered screech owl and an eastern screech owl. Which leads me to believe that it's not an owl. Mm, we are uh, very sneaky. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it's like... Um... It's not an osprey. It's it's like a maybe a hawk, a hawk of some kind. No, the answer we're looking for was Western screech owl. <laughs> <laughs> you overthought it. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it resembles another owl. Right. Okay. That that makes it sense. It resembles the Eastern screech owl, and it's in the Canadian Northwest. So you, you had a shot at that one if you had put it together. <laughs> the Western screech owl. True. Um, all right. right last but not off. least. The Eskimo cur- uh, Curlew, I believe that's how it sp- uh, sounds. Good band name. C-U-R-L-E-W. Eskimo Curlew. The Eskimo Curlew are so rare that it is officially considered critically endangered. In fact, many believe that it is possibly extinct, as there has not been a reliable sighting since what year? Mm. 19 yeah 28 no 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 87 1987 okay yep there's that was the last time it's been a reliable sighting there's uh a confirmed sighting i think uh further back than that but that's nobody's seen one since at least uh, i guess that a reliable sighting is anyone people actually trust i don't know i guess yeah like not just like, some kid coming out of the woods like, dude, I totally saw that bird that no one else has seen. Right. It's like Crazy Bill's like, I see them all the time. We like, should elect no. Crazy Bill for president. President. Yeah. Crazy Bill for president. I like didn't birds. We all, <laughs> didn't we already do that like three or four presidents ago? <laughs> well, good news. You won something. So what I need you to do is think about a category for our next guest. And I'm going to go okay. get my sack of joy that you can put your hand in. Right, here it is. <laughs> the I look that just excited. went across his face. And look, it says best gift ever. It's got to be good. So they're not wrapped, so you have to close your eyes. Okay. And then shove your hand in my sack. Oh. And then just reach in there. It's human compost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's warm and, and mushy. You can pick anything you want. Yep. I'm feeling for That's a, a passenger oh. pigeon. All right. Oh, yeah. I got a. Disney Princess LCD watch. I think it fits you. nice. Yeah, I yeah. feel like it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this proudly. Yeah, I would <laughs> say maybe at your show uh, Thursday, May 9th at uh, T- uh, Tin Lizzy Wineworks in Clarksville, Maryland. Maybe maybe the uh, Princess watch. For sure. Yeah, for sure. If anybody comes up, I'll use it as a capo, or um, or maybe even like, I don't know. I'll think of a good use for it. So if anybody goes to that show, go up and be like, hey, nice watch. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the category for our next guest? Um, what off the top pocket, of your head? Pocket pocket watches. Pocket watches. That's great. Generically, pocket watches. That'll give us a wide enough berth to work with. Cool. Hmm. Instead of rare pocket watches from the Canadian Northwest. <laughs> God damn it, Kai. Though in theory, abundant, any watch could be a pocket watch. Abundant location, pocket location, watches location. from the Canadian. <laughs> specifically from like Letter Kenny. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I'm starting to not like him. Uh, all right. So if you want to see if our next guest is able to guess uh, any questions about pocket watches, listen in next week for that compelling uh, entertainment. Uh, so let's move to what we like to call near, near. and far. Go far again. You know how it goes. It's yeah. pretty. Far. We've got two stories: See? one near, That's one far. That's what it's all about. You understand? You understand? And uh, one is near, one is far. Uh, so let's start with near. You said uh, you had a pretty entertaining, entertaining show on the wharf, and then you said to talk about Graham and the A Team van. Yes. Okay. So, so what is this? Uh, I made a really good friend. Um, I I helped found Pearl Street Warehouse, which is uh, oh great a music I venue. Yeah, uh, I've heard I was, great things about it. I was the front of house sound engineer there nice. for um about a year. Okay, and I met a really good friend who ended up you know filling in for me when I left. Okay, um, his name's uh, Graham uh, White. I believe Graham Smith. I believe. Yeah, yeah, he's a really, really great guy. Um, great sound engineer, and he's very well connected in DC. Okay. And um, he's partnered with like a number of pro- nonprofit organizations. He mm-hmm. runs one that's really cool, um, called the Awesome Foundation. Fun. And that sounds like, awesome. Every every month they yeah. give money to like one applicant. You know, so cool. They fund a lot of projects. He's got like a lot of great things going on. But one of his projects, um. And this was around the time that I met him. Uh, he got funding from a nonprofit organization to go secure a van, strip it, okay, um, and then you know get the electric working. And then he had like solar panels leased from a, a new company out of Philadelphia that nice. went on the top of this van. Okay, and then solar powered um, van. Yeah, and he had a PA in the back. Oh, cool! And I think I want to say it was used for um, part of a protest down in charlottesville for the par- pipeline okay um so anyway he i think one night after a show i was crashing at his spot because mm-hmm. i was commuting from maryland when i was working at uh pearl street okay and like i was crashing at his place i think off of l street okay. and this is when see. he just got the van and i just remember like waiting on some corner like and this was after the gig so it was like two or three in the morning yeah and he rolls up in this like it 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 was like jacked off the ground too. Yeah. You know, he's got big tires on it and whatnot. And uh, it looked like something out of the A team. And I just that like hopped awesome. in this van <laughs> and, you know, we hung out. That's so, so cool. <laughs> we have to get, get hold of that van. Yeah. That- <laughs> um, I believe he still has it. So. We have to do the, do the podcast from the van at some point. He does events. He, um, oh, he okay. was with the, uh, um, he did like a parade. Um, the oh, funk, okay. what is it called? Funk Parade? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Funk Parade. That's yep. very cool. Um, I don't know if we're going to have time to go to your uh, far story. That's totally cool. Because we're pretty much at the end of things. Um, uh, but uh, I wanted to, once again, uh, for everyone that's listening, we have Galen Clark here in studio Thursday, May 9th. He's going to be at Tin Lizzie Wineworks in uh, Clarksville, Maryland. Um, we have the track G- uh, Giants Causeway. You'll hear that here at the end of the show. And then uh, his, that's from his album Providence. You can get that from just anywhere that streams music across the entire world. Yeah. If you go to Russia and find a place that streams music, it's probably there, right? Yeah. And then you have a new album coming out at some point in time. You'll tell us about that, right? Indeed. All Indeed. right. So hopefully we'll have you back on. Did you have a good time? I did. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. Thank you uh, guys for having me. Yeah, absolutely. As everyone knows, um, we uh, cannot do this without you. So please like our posts. Follow us, retweet us, share the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget to review us on Facebook, iTunes, Google Play, Stars, all of that stuff. And don't forget to subscribe. We'd really like to keep in touch with everyone. If you're an artist, musician, or culture creator in the D.C. area, we want you on our show. Email us at booking at anotherwastedhour.com. I want to thank uh, Engineer Adam. Hello, Adam. 
Hello. Uh, Thank you, Adam. Ken Evendure, McNally 22, Justin Rogers, Big Metal Records, Big Metal Studios, and Al Chemical Records for all their contributions. Most of all, thanks to our guest, Galen Clark, and you, our fans, for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour. And if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. Shit, sorry.